All right, let's start this thing off with some beautiful air-to-air -air footage here. Uh, Eugen and Kin uh, took over as pilot in command while I got this air-to-air -air footage with the Phantom. Um, man, that's so smooth. So there you can see the battery on the bottom. That large black area had to cut the fuselage. You'll see that a little later in the video. You can see the VTX and the FPV camera, which is mounted on a servo there in the vertical stabilizer. Uh, it's a 2.4 meter wingspan, which is just shy of eight feet. Spinning a 12 by 12 prop, 700 kV, three cell lithium ion. Uh, yep. So uh, here's the launch. I launched right before 7 a.m. Um, you can see the timer in the top middle starts as soon as I throw the plane which is pretty cool. Um, I'll tell you everything on the OSD. Uh, top left, we have number of GPS satellites, wind speed, airspeed, ground speed, distance and direction to home, flight mode. Right now it's auto because I'm using auto launch. Uh, top middle, we have flight time, so two minutes and 40 seconds. Top right, we have milliamp hours consumed, current being pulled from the battery, battery voltage, altitude, miles across the ground, and throttle percentage. So most of the flight was spent in return to launch mode, which means it came to the home position and circled around the position waiting for me to take over. Of course, I didn't take over. I just watched it and let it fly. Uh, here you can see we're about 72 minutes into the flight. This looks like smooth video, but I am uh, jumping clips. I tried to make it look smooth, but kind of neat. 81 minutes. Uh, it was super calm in the morning, so uh, the efficiency was really nice. Um, later, the sun came out, and uh, even though it wasn't very windy, there was uh, quite a bit of thermal activity, which you can see in some of the later clips uh, is causing some turbulence. Um, I think it probably works out to about neutral, since I'm not like trying to circle to stay in a thermal. I'm just kind of passing through. I think that. The downside of the turbulence is probably outweighed by the slight bump of passing through a thermal. 178 minutes now. Um, yeah, things are looking pretty good. 270 minutes. Uh, still looking pretty good. Uh, you'll see that there are a couple flight parameters that I need to adjust. So we're getting close to where we see some strange behavior. Things are still going pretty well now. Uh, okay, so about to hit 360 minutes, which is six hours. Yeah, and so here's some uh, some more footage I got with the Phantom. Uh, Ken was pilot in command this time. And uh, you can see that the plane is flying with a ridiculously high angle of attack. I have no idea how it's doing that. Um, this is what the OSD was showing, 100% throttle, that's auto throttle there, pulling the max current that the motor can handle, which is about 20 amps, uh, and it's fighting to get back to 375 feet, which it is not doing successfully. Uh, it seems that this was my mistake. I set the minimum airspeed to 10 meters per second, which is a bit too slow. Uh, here you can see me taking over and putting it into uh, cruise mode. I kind of babysat the last 20 minutes to get it to the 400 minute mark because that seemed like a cool goal that was reasonable. Battery's still at 10.4 volts, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can see me pumping the flaps here, kind of like an air brake to increase my approach angle. Making a final turn here, dropping the flaps. Not 100% sure I'm gonna make it across the gravel, so I stow them get to the grass, pop them, a little bit of crabbing here, and I blip that throttle a little bit to try to re-engage the ESC brake, the prop spinning slow enough for a nice touchdown, and there we are, 194.8 miles across the ground, uh, landing with a conservative 10.4 volts. Here's the battery, uh, about 3.43 volts per cell. Uh, for LiPo, that would be very dangerously low, but for lithium ion, that was definitely still in the safe zone. Um, here's a picture of the plane. This is how it breaks down. Um, I put that box under it just so when the uh, fuselage is upside down, the antenna doesn't hit the ground. 
uh, yep, here's how the wings slide in. Uh, I 3D printed a little plastic clip there in the middle of the wing that grabs onto the fuselage. Uh, there used to be a much fancier wing attachment system, but I had to gut that. Uh, there you can see where I cut the area open to fit that massive battery. Uh, yep, that's what it looks like when it's in flying shape. Really beautiful bird. Uh, there is the <laughs> awesome pan servo and uh, the video transmitter, which is actually in the rudder. Which is kind of funny that it's in a control surface. Um, yep, big beautiful plane. I hit all the wires in the foam. I had to do a little bit of carving and cutting. Uh, but here you'll see from the front angle that it is very streamlined. Just a little extra drag from the camera and the video transmitter up there. But uh, for all the places to have drag, back middle of the airplane is a pretty good place. Ah, uh, here are the very, very interesting numbers. So same battery pack that I used in the Talon and the Clouds. Same motor and prop from the Talon, which was very successful at five hours. Uh, the Phoenix with that gigantic wingspan and high aspect ratio ring wing. Um, really was showing off today um, it flew for 6.7 hours covered 195 miles across the ground all while pulling an average of 5.9 amps um, very very impressive performance from the Phoenix especially considering that it's a uh, $150 airplane which is uh, quite reasonable um, I did add a term at the bottom uh, VTX power so since I had to put the VTX in the rudder uh, I went from the large 600 milliwatt with the easily adjustable channels down to a 600 milliwatt version uh, Pagoda antennas you saw there um, that was my first time using those I'm very impressed open source hardware so they're super cheap you can get them for like three bucks each on Banggood highly recommend those antennas um, I guess the next step from here is to put some solar panels in the wings. I don't think I can put enough to get the voltage up to where it needs to be, so I'll probably use a buck converter. Uh, and at this point, I want to thank Spike from FPV Reviews. Uh, we've been exchanging emails, and he has been incredibly helpful in this project and uh, very generous with his time and knowledge. Uh, thanks for watching.